Welcome, you guys, to the DR Show for Pop Dust. We are at Atlantic Records today with the one and only Katie Turner. Everyone's screaming. You can hear them. And you look gorgeous. We had her on the podcast a few months ago. So, and she filmed it in a bathtub. I did film it in a bathtub. I do remember very, very clearly. The only guest we've had on the show um, in a bathtub. So tell us what happened since that episode. What's been going on in your life? Somehow a lot and not a lot. It's very confusing because I think back to that and I'm like, wow, I've come so far. And then sometimes I forget everything I've ever done from that moment. Um, so that's a fun fact about me. I'll forget <laughs> existing for periods of time. Um, what has happened? I've made a mu music, uh, new music. Uh, I'm putting out EPs this year too. Um, I'm going on tour and um, I'm still causing mayhem uh, in my personal life. So that's pretty good for me. Yeah, we definitely have to get to like the juice. But speaking of tour, word on the street is you are bringing your bestie yes. on tour. Can you tell me how that happened and like what kind of trouble are you guys going to get into? Oh, wow. So basically, not only is she my best friend, she's my roommate too. Um, and I just think she is, um, you know, you, you have your platonic soulmate, right? And, and definitely, I just think that I could not be a month without her. And I was like, it really helps that you are one of the most talented people I've ever met. So come on the road with me and we'll kill two birds with one stone. I don't want to be without you. And then we can cause, you know, mischief across America. Um, and mm -hmm. that is exactly what we're going to do, like thrift shopping, getting treats, getting like our cutie little treats. Um, me probably crying a lot. I don't know, maybe, maybe a little bit of everything. Okay, wait, I really wanna go back to your whole journey. Like, let's take it back all the way before American Idol um, to when you first really found like your love for music. Basically how I found music was, um, I found it through a silly reason and then I quickly, it's kind of like when your friends are like, you should meet this person and you're like, yeah, whatever, and they end up changing your whole life. That's what music was for me. I had no idea when I started singing, it would become my outlet for communication and um, being myself. Because honestly, how I found music was I, I loved bands and I loved X Factor and I had this whole big conspiracy in my head of like being on X Factor and being made into a group like One Direction or like Fifth Harmony. Um, yes, speaking so, of One Direction. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a, didn't you get like cash, like catfished by like? Oh my God, yes. Um, I, it was a story. I did think I was talking to Zayn Malik from One Direction from the years of 13 to 15 um, and that, and that's my truth, and I stand by that. Um, I don't stand by that. Um, is he your favorite in One Direction? I think it would always switch. So I went through a phase of each of them being my favorite, but I think consistently it has been Harry for me, um, or Niall, or is it actually, I, it, yeah, I, all, of I, all of them, all of them. I still, whenever they come back, I'll be there. I will be front row, but, that basically got me into doing music. Um, and then I realized like, wait, I can write songs and I can tell my side of the story and I can be myself and this is amazing. But even then when I really loved music, I never even realized I could be an artist until I got an American Idol because I just, it, it felt like a mountain that was too big to climb. I'm like, I'm never going to um, get noticed or anything. So maybe I'll just go to school for uh, I don't know, something. And then when I got an American Idol, I think that was the moment that was like, oh my God, I want to be an artist. I want to do music for the rest of my life because I can now. It kind of was that like validating factor. Wow, I was, a lot of people, when it comes to these like competition shows, I mean, it looks so glamorous and so like well played. What are some kind of like cool behind the scene moments that you can kind of share about that competition? I'm trying to think of the cool, it really is. Um, it's high stress, for sure. 
it's high stress, but it is like an, an like a it is an interesting blend of people. Like you are going to get the people like me who have never stepped like foot in front of a crowd really unless it's their choir solo or you're gonna have the people who are like have been performing since they were like two in diapers but in that moment in the competition like we're all equal I guess and that's like always really interesting of you learn a lot from each other and you become friends with people that you never would have become friends with um in the sense of like me being my like you know i became really good friends with like country singers and every and we're just hanging out and we're just talking about video games or something and that was always really fun because it just we're all we all just became like a little like tight knit family and then i think of an interesting thing is um yeah it's a long long days what you see on TV, it's probably like 13, 13 hours or 14 hours of a day of just sitting around, a lot of waiting. But I find that's what the music industry is, so it really does prep you to be here. A lot of your fans probably see the Katie now, you know, like, but what about the kid that you were? Were you like the good kid? I know she, like, you did choir, but like, what kind of like person were you back then? Weird. Oh my God. I was weird i was the girl that would play mermaids in the pool um <laughs> but that's not weird because like everyone does that right but i took it like up i took it up a little like i up the ante and me i had a group of friends me and them and in fourth grade like we were convinced like we would show up in character so i was like a witch and mixed with like a supernatural like witch and I could turn into a griffin like the eagle lion thing and then my friend was a vampire and then my other friend was a werewolf and we were convinced I mean I never was personally but the thing is they they were selling it too so I'm like oh we're all in this together so like we would show up at school like my friend was like mm, like we were really weird but I again I think that's made me who I am today so I'm very thankful for those experiences um, I had a bowl cut. Um, no I was, I was a, like, yeah, and like the flat bangs, like I look like coconut head. Did you put your own beans? Mm-mm. I just, for some reason, I would go to the salon and like, give me that. Mm -hmm. I need it, and I need to have it for six years. Um, ba I wasn't necessarily a, I mean, I was a good kid. I just was really, really like awkward. Um, Still am, but I, I look at young little Katie and I go like, I, I gave the vibes that like, I definitely would hiss at you if you like talked to me. Like I just had no awareness whatsoever. We love her and I think she's iconic for that. Let's talk about uh, Easy. Mm. I love that song. I was playing it this morning when I was like making coffee. My, my friend Victoria, she was like dancing to it. But there's like, it seems like there's a deeper meaning to it. So I want to talk about the lyrics to that song and like where did the inspiration come from for that one? So I'll be honest, be very candid. Um, basically, I was in Nashville and I was with my producer, Ruslan. And for some reason, this was like the one time I've ever tried to write music high. <laughs> um, no way! And I was like... Like edibles? Like, what are we talking about? I think I, think I heard about oh, mom, if you're watching. I, I definitely, <laughs> I just definitely, um... It wasn't edible, so you know, the other way of doing it. Love you, mom. Um, <laughs> and basically, while I was in this state, for some reason, the lyrics of just like... I was like, I don't know what to write about. Like, I just wish it was easy, but I was never taught how to be easy. And, oh my God, I just realized that I just feel like the spiral starts and then I'm just and he's like yeah my producer's like yeah wow because we're we're both um <laughs> that little in our bag um and then I write it and it just kind of comes out of me and a lot of the vocals are the day one vocals like literally um I can't think of like I think actually all of it except for harmonies are the original day of vocals of me just being 
stoned out of my mind. But basically what it meant to me was, um, yeah, I am usually the girl if somebody hurts my feelings or does something out of pocket, I won't really tell them about it because I want to be like easy. I want to be the cool girl. I only want to be thought about if it's like pleasant. Like I don't want to step on any toes. Like it's that way of like keeping yourself small, but not small enough to be invisible. Just like small enough to only be perceived positively or what in a like a way that benefits them or something. Uh, so yeah, that's what it meant to me. 100%. What I thought about just now is like, I think that's kind of the result of just like societal pressure on girls every single day. What do you have in the kitchen right now cooking wow. for music? Yeah, like what can we expect? Are you gonna play new songs on tour? You can expect that. You can expect um, an EP, act one, and act two coming out later this year. Um, of songs, it's called Comedy and Tragedy. Kind of sums me up as um, a person where sometimes I like a little spice and sometimes I, you know, am going to write devastating lyrics and that's cool and I, I can exist in both worlds because um, that makes me me. Um, and just a lot of chaos, but curated chaos, so that's good. Uh, and I hope you will like it. Okay, so we have a surprise for you guys because back when Pop Does first started, um, we did this thing called Magic Box. And for Katie today, we are going to bring it back. So let's go. Yay. I say like, let's pick like three from here. Okay. And I'll just shake it up. And um, yeah, you just, I guess, open it up and pick out a question, and it's a random question, but we want to know what you think oh about these. <laughs> I'm going to hand this. Okay. Did you ever have Bieber fever? Oh, my God. Oh, wait, so this is like... I, I was more of a directioner, but, like, I, of course I did love Justin Bieber, but also I kind of had, like, I, I felt a certain type of way about him because also I was a Jonas Brothers fan. So when people started associating JB with Justin Bieber and said they're Jonas Brothers, I felt a little hurt. I have to be honest. But you know what? So I didn't have Bieber fever, but you know, maybe a cold, Bieber cold. I did feel <laughs> a little bit of the sickness, but yeah, I was a directioner. 24 hour virus. Yeah. Oh my God. I'll just put it. Sick. I'll put it right here. Right here. Just Star Wars. <laughs> no, did you? Were you a Bieber fan? I really wasn't. I was into weird like things, like finding bands from the UK on YouTube with like one K views. I'm like, oh my god! Oh, weird, weird. Do you do any impressions? Um, <laughs> mm, not well, not well, and I don't. I, I can't tell if I really want to like embarrass myself, but maybe I will. Okay, um, no, they're not good. I try, like, I can do a really good like indie girl singer voice. Oh, no, oh, man, we are, are, I'm here today on Pop Dice, are, are, <laughs> That was actually fire. Oh, like, Oh, I really like to go and do like a British accent, but this is not an impression of anybody. It's just became my nervous tick. And now, but see, I lose it now. I can't do it as well. Um, wow. er, no, Kermit, no, bad, bad. Um, yeah, really. I say the indie girl takes it. The indie thank girl? You, thank you. Wait, you should actually make a song with that voice. That was like really cool. I'm with, I want to be easy on the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> no. What is your... Biggest pet peeve. Um, big, oh, I don't know what my biggest one is because they're all kind of equal to me. Okay, people who are mean to waiters or like wait staff, that's gross. You're disgusting. They're just doing their job. Um, so don't do that, okay? Be respectful. This is our first time in a minute. Let's, let's have one more. Name an instrument you wish you could play. Um, um, 
Um, uh, okay. Mm. <sighs> the keyboard guitar thing that you wear over your... Keytar. Keytar! Keytar! Or something like a harp. A harp. Like, who's, who's pulling out the harp That's anymore? Cool. I would love to just play the harp. I feel like it would... I would just love to say that I could do it. Wow. Let's go. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Thank you so much, Katie, oh for coming on the show. Well, back I into the box. Back into the box you go. Miss Katie Turner. Catch her out on tour. Catch her new EP. And hopefully we have you on the show again. I would love to. Oh my God. You're like a mermaid. <laughs>